I was standing in the garden, having a heated discussion with my husband about time. The time I felt like he always had, but somehow I never had. How is it you're scheduling diving trips left and right, and I can't even find the time to figure out what it is I want to schedule in, I told him. Our kids were three and seven at the time, and I love spending time with them. But I needed something that was my own, something that wasn't practical or necessary for anyone but myself. So that evening, he put a course catalog on my pillow, and he said, book something today, schedule some time for yourself, and I'll figure out the logistics with the kids. And that was really the push I needed to get started again. So at this time, I was really thinking a lot about who am I? Well, I know who I am on paper, mechanical engineer, wife, mother, daughter, sister, all that stuff. But I was thinking it or really feeling it on a deeper level. So let's go back a little. Speaking of mechanical engineers, both my parents are mechanical engineers. And they always supported my creativity and art, even though they weren't necessarily artistic themselves. I had several sketchbooks growing up, though I didn't call them sketchbooks, they were just notebooks where I would draw anything and everything that inspired me. But of course, being engineers, they were practical, and they would tell me, be whatever you want to be, but make sure you get an education, which is good advice, and which I followed. And someone else who thought education was important were my grandparents, especially on my mother's side. They had come from China to Taiwan to the US and built a whole life for themselves and their extended family through hard work and education. Of course, I didn't understand that at that time when I was a kid, when we would visit them in Los Angeles. They were just my grandparents. But Los Angeles was a contrast to the Nordic model that I grew up in. Los Angeles was a place of abundance, a place of impressions, so much going on, endless freeways and cars, going to pick up a cereal or choose something in the grocery store and having a million different options which was a little terrifying, but also very exciting as a kid. But one thing I really loved to do was to go out to dinner with my family. We would go to Chinese restaurants and sit at these big round tables and drink hot tea and discuss what to order. Of course, everyone wanted to order their favorites. And the textures and the flavors of the food was just so amazing and unlike anything I could get anywhere else. So Los Angeles, it was a contrast to Sweden and a contrast to my other grandparents. They lived a very different life. They lived in Småland, in the middle of the forest. And if Los Angeles was a place of impressions, Smallland, to me, was a place of imagination. Anything could happen in those dark forests. We would go foraging for mushrooms and wild blueberries. You could see a big rock, and it could be a troll. A piece of moss could be my pet hedgehog. My cousins and my sister and I, we all made up games and played. So much fun. My grandmother, she was an artist. At least to me, she was an artist. She had many different professions. She was a teacher, a librarian. She even studied archaeology. But to me, she was always an artist. And one of my favorite things to do with her was to sit in her studio and experiment with all the materials she had. She really cultivated my love of art and creativity, and we shared that together. So, 
Maybe you're thinking about that course catalog I mentioned before. What happened with that? Well, I picked a class called Intuitive Painting, and I went every Wednesday for a fall semester and sat in a loft space with a couple other women, painting and drinking tea while the sun was setting outside. And it was just as blissful as it sounds. It was so great to get back to that creative process and listening to myself. So after that, I got really curious and thought, what else is out there? What else can I try? So I tried a bunch of things. I did punch needle, I did mixed media embroidery, I did online classes, I did in-person classes, all these things. But I still had this issue of time. I was pretty exhausted after a full day of work, chores, picking up kids, all that stuff. But I managed to carve out a little piece of time for myself every now and then. So one day, I was listening to this podcast, and they had a collage artist on. And she was talking about this amazing collage community and all these art clubs on Instagram. So I got really curious and I went online to explore more. And what I found was this amazing collage community. All these people creating together. So I started creating alongside them, anonymously at first, and then more and more in public. I made friends. I exchanged art with other artists. I got published in books. I sent my art for installations in other parts of the world was really amazing. But the best part was, it fit into my life. I could flip through a magazine and then go cook dinner for the kids while thinking about what pieces to choose. I could paint a background and then, while it was drying, make dinner or put the kids to bed or whatever chore I had. Even laying out a collage and then folding laundry gave me some perspective that I could come back and use. So this issue of time was no longer really an issue. It worked in my favor. It even helped me. So maybe now you're wondering, how do I go about creating a collage? Well, I start with a word or a sentence, some kind of prompt a jumping off point into the creative process. Sometimes I know where I'm going, sometimes I don't. And even if I know where I'm going, that's not necessarily where I end up. But this unstructured process is such a great complement to the rest of my life. Being an engineer and a mother requires some structure. So, thinking about this whole creative process, and all these amazing things I've told you about today, I can really see that I am a collage, as are each of you. If you think about your own journey for a moment, where you started, where you are today, all those pieces that stayed with you along the way that make up the artwork of you. There's so many things pulling us in different directions and trying to grab our attention. So it's so important to listen to yourself and reconnect with who you are. So remember, however you express yourself creatively, the work of art is you. Thank you so much.